This episode is sponsored by me and Learn Light and Sound. We have courses on how to improve your lighting and sound, link down below. This entire video is recorded with the Zoom H5 Studio, right here, with the built-in microphones. And we're going to normalize it to minus 23 LUFS, sort of a standard level, and we're not gonna do any other post-processing on it. So you're hearing the Zoom H5 Studio with the built-in microphones. All right, let's get you some sound samples comparing the Zoom H5 Studio to the H4 Essential. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you were quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Very quickly running through the features here, I'm gonna put up on the screen a list of all the features and kind of the highlights from my perspective. I'm gonna assume that if you're watching this video and you're interested in potentially buying this recorder that you're probably familiar with all these things. If you're not, you can pause here, take a look. I don't wanna to spend too much time here, but it's a six track recorder, so you can record four inputs plus a stereo mix at the same time, 32-bit float up to 192 kilohertz, for your sample rates and it has new built-in microphones that are much larger than any of the previous handy recorders from zoom and in my opinion sound much better i'm going to just stop and say it right here of all of the zoom h series recorders the handy recorders the h5 studio is the one that to me sounds the best and performs the best in terms of audio quality from the start and i've used a lot of the handy recorders this one seems to be the best the inbuilt microphones can handle sound pressure levels up to 140 dB SPL max, so that's really good. It has these stereo microphones are in an XY pattern fixed at 90 degrees. The two XLR quarter inch combination inputs can supply phantom power. The recorder is evidently using the Zoom F series preamplifiers, which are substantially cleaner and, in my opinion, better sounding than the any of the preamplifiers they've used in any of the Zoom handy recorders up to this point. It can supply up to 60 dB of gain. Note, that is not analog gain, that is post-conversion gain, that's digital gain. It's just like if you downloaded a file onto your computer and boosted it in post-production. That's a, an important distinction. It does have digital look-ahead limiters. It has a new two-inch screen, which is actually quite nice for navigating. In addition to the screen, for those with any sort of visual impairment, there is also a voiceover feature, which is really nice. So as you're in the menus, it will actually read what settings you're currently on and what they're set to. There is evidently wireless time code compatibility with a TCA1 module that you plug into the side. I don't have that, so I haven't tested that, but the BT1, another module you can also put into the side, allows you to control the recorder via an app. So that's available as well. 3.5 millimeter stereo jack with line out to send audio to your camera. 3.5 millimeter stereo input with plug-in power, 2.5 volts on the microphone capsule itself. The, it's a module that you can remove from the recorder. So you can use many lavalier microphones. I tested a Sankin Cos 11D, which actually is spec to use five volts. Um, this is only supplying 2.5 volts. It works. I don't know if it would do damage to your lavalier microphone over time, but anyway. There is a 20 milliwatt headphone output and you power the unit with four AA batteries. In our test using four nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries, uh, specifically the IKEA LADA 2450s, we were able to get over 12.5 hours of recording time with the inbuilt microphones. And I still had a bar left so we could actually go longer. I'm gonna guess you could probably go up to 14 hours is my guess, but you can also run it on alkaline batteries, lithium batteries, and you get some really good powering time. That is actually probably, I don't know how they did that with this color screen, which is much larger than on the previous recorders. And it's impressive. You will get a little bit less if you're phantom powering an external microphone, so keep that in mind, but still extraordinary performance. That's one of the things that Zoom does really, really well. They're super power efficient on their recorders, so that's good. You can, of course, also power it via the USB-C port. So with a battery bank or plugging it in somehow. There's an available accessory pack that has a windscreen, a shell case, AC adapter, USB-C cable, does not come with anything, nothing in the 
in the box with the recorder except the recorder itself. No USB cable, nothing else. There is a lock switch to lock the controls and it also locks the gain knobs, so that's important to keep in mind. This recorder uses a new Zoom 3.0 capsule system, so they're making a new series of capsules, microphones that go with this. So there are going to be, there's going to be a stereo shotgun microphone. There's one that allows you to plug in additional XLR microphones, and there is, this one's not out yet, but there will also evidently be one that is a wireless microphone receiver for their own, Zoom's own wireless microphone system. So that's coming later this year. It also can operate as a USB audio interface for inputs to outputs, and you can record at the same time, and it is able to send 32-bit float or 24-bit or 16-bit if you need that. The self-noise is specced at minus 127 dBU A-weighted. That's the same as the Zoom F series, so that looks good. All right, a few things that I want to cover here. So I did a variety of tests. Let's go ahead and jump into those. So first of all, build quality. It is plastic. It feels like a different plastic than they've used on some of their previous recorders, including the Essential series of recorders. So the H4E, which I own, bought with my own money. Oh, and by the way, this is on loan from B&H. I did not receive this from Zoom. B&H is not giving it to me. I have to ship it back when I'm done with this review, uh, just so that that's, there's full disclosure there and you understand where it's coming from. No one's paying me to make this video. So this plastic on the build is different. It feels higher quality than the Zoom H Essential series of recorders, and it doesn't feel like the same plastic that gets all sticky like the previous generation Zoom recorders. So that's good. I will say that the battery cover is a little bit loose. It rattles around a little bit, at least on my copy. It seems like Zoom has never been great at battery covers. <laughs> However, on the bright side, RF shielding. They did put some radio frequency shielding in here, so you shouldn't get digital interference from things like your mobile phone, Wi-Fi routers, wireless access points, or even wireless transmitters. And so in our tests here, putting those, putting a wireless transmitter or UHF transmitter right up next to it, along with my phone, which was streaming over Wi-Fi, we didn't get any sort of interference, which is fantastic. It is a 32-bit float recorder, and it does appear to have multiple analog to digital converters. And in fact, if you look at the block diagram that is in the manual, it's basically explaining how the whole thing works. It doesn't even show preamplifiers. Now, I don't know if that means there actually aren't preamplifiers, and they're just using the same converters that are in the Zoom F series. But what it shows is from the inputs, those XLR inputs, it goes straight to the converters, which is interesting. And this is sort of a highlight of Zoom's ethos, which seems to be, if you can do it digitally, do it digitally. Um, so they <laughs> just the way that they operate, for example, their limiters are digital limiters, not analog limiters. Um, in any case, so 32-bit float, you can restore the audio if it goes above zero dB. There is no technically no gain to set. The knobs that you see, what they, what they call gain knobs on the front, are post-conversion gain knob. So it's already been converted to digital, and then you're adjusting the levels from there in the digital domain. So you're never setting the analog gain on a preamplifier with this recorder, ever. We also did a test by plugging in the Sankin Cost 11D, intentionally recording it so that it exceeded 0 dB, and in post we were able to recover it there. I don't know if they're using multiple converters on the 3.5 millimeter input on the microphone capsule, that's a kind of a cheat that they had on some of the, the H Essential series where the 3.5 millimeter wasn't using multiple converters. It was only using a single converter. So for those where that's really important to you, keep that in mind. So it's it'll it still generally works, but it's probably a little easier to overload and to get clipping and, and distortion. Practical noise floor sample. This, I, I need to be really careful here. People have kind of viewed this as a scientific test when I've talked about it in previous recorders and microphone samples. This is a sample. This is not a scientific reproducible test. All I'm doing is, in this case, setting up the recorder in my very quiet room. I turn everything off. I unplug the freezer over here, turn all the lights off. I make a very quiet environment. I've got these sound blankets on all sides. And then I record dialogue, and then I leave some silence. And then I bring that into post-production, boost the overall file so that the dialogue is at minus 23 LUFS, and then measure that silent portion. This is basically a measure of what I was able to achieve in a quiet space as far as noise floor. That's all it is. And so it's sort of, it's a reflection of a lot of things. It's a reflection of my room. 
Um, it does take into account, of course, the dynamic range and the noise floor and the so on and so forth of the recorder or microphone. But in our case, we were able to get to minus 67 dB RMS max, which is good. In other words, I'm not fighting a noise floor with this recorder. Unlike the Zoom H4 Essential, which we reviewed last year, you may be fighting a little bit of noise there. All right, handling noise is not amazing. Here's a sample. If you keep a really firm grip and don't push any buttons and don't adjust any settings, probably okay. But as soon as you adjusting any settings, it's going to pick it up and it's going to be a mess. So just keep your expectations realistic. I don't, they call these the handy recorders. I think a lot of people assume, oh, it's a handheld recorder. Eh, it's more handy than it is handheld. Be careful out there, people. Okay, bye. Now, this is not something that's unique to the Zoom H5 Studio. All of the handy recorders have always struggled with this. The difference is the H5 Studio has shock mounts on the microphones that are built in, so you shouldn't get as much handling noise. The reality is, in my experience, you're still getting plenty of handling noise. So changing settings while recording, adjusting the gain knob, moving your hands or sliding your hands to get across the body of the recorder, all of that's going to get picked up. So you still need to have a really firm grip, have all your settings dialed in, and then keep it that way during the recording. So for those that were expecting those shock mounts to completely isolate, they do not, um, but they do help a little bit, especially when you're moving the unit around. So they help kind of in those situations. All right, a couple of notes here I wanna run through. Again, just to highlight the gain knobs are not adjusting analog gain or an amplifier, they're actually just digital gain. So again, Zoom does that. It's, it's an interesting thing to do. It's not bad, it's not wrong. It's just a different way to approach things. And uh, so they do. Overall, as I said, the Zoom H5 Studio is probably my favorite Zoom H series recorder ever, and I've used a bunch of them. How does it compare to the Tascam Porta Capture? I think that the built-in microphones sound substantially better on the Zoom H5 Studio. I, you get much better battery <laughs> powering time with the H5 Studio than you do with the Porta Capture. I personally prefer the Zoom H5 Studio. That's not to say the Porta Capture isn't good and isn't a good fit for a lot of other people. But if I had to choose a handy style recorder, I would choose the Zoom H5 Studio. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'm not going to keep this microphone. I have to send it back to B&H, so I don't know if I can do further tests necessarily. But if there's something you're curious about, I'm happy to do my best to answer that. In the meantime, get out there and make some great sound, and we'll talk to you again soon.